Today we are introducing comprehensive legislation to set strong new safety standards for the shipment of crude by rail. There have been four fiery derailments involving crude oil since the start of February. And according to the Department of Transportation, we could see six more by the end of the year. Four years ago, railroads hauled almost no crude oil, and today trains with up to 150 cars nearly a mile long transport more than one million barrels of oil every day. This is a 4,000 percent increase in crude by rail shipments since 2000. And these trains travel through nearly every state in the continental United States. In the state of Washington, crude oil, crude oil trains travel through the middle of downtown areas of every major metropolitan area. You can see here they enter Spokane, Washington, down through the Tri-Cities, through Vancouver, up through Tacoma, where there is one refinery, through Seattle, Everett, and then to our four refineries that are very near the uh, Canadian border. So every major metropolitan area of our state, and I mean the downtown sections of our state, see these trains. So in the next several years, what we currently have now is two trains a day. In the next several years, that is expected to rise to 16 trains a day. So needless to say, the issue of volatility is a very big issue for us. We have seen how volatility in these accidents in Canada cost 47 people their lives, and how explosions can affect an area as large as a uh, one half mile, I mean a half mile radius. This legislation that we're introducing today does three things. One, it ensures that oil volatility is monitored and regulated, and that two, old tank cars are taken off the tracks and replaced with safer, newer models and three, that rail infrastructure is properly maintained. Taxpayers should not be on the hook to bail out communities after a disaster caused by private companies. The railroad involved in the tragic accident in Quebec only had 25 million in liability insurance. Cleanup from disasters and rebuilding will cost hundreds of millions of dollars. So we want to follow what Canada has done and create a trust fund for cleanup that is paid for on the movement of crude oil. That is not in this legislation, but we hope to introduce that legislation in the very near future.